In this video, we'll be going over SIADH and DI. If you'd like to reference anything heard in this video, don't forget to access my SIDH versus DI study sheet on my Etsy shop. This study sheet can also be found in my MedSearch bundle with a ton of other MedSearch topics or my Nursing School Comprehensive bundle as well. You can click the link in the upper right corner to purchase this sheet at any time in this video. All right, let's break this down super simple. We're talking all about the endocrine system here and specifically the pituitary gland. Now, I'm gonna give you a refresher on what even is the pituitary gland because I sure did not know this and it made learning SIDH and DI way more difficult. If I could go back and tell myself one thing in nursing school, it would have been to know your organs, know all of them, know what's inside them and all of their functions. The pituitary gland is a tiny pea-sized gland that sits just below the hypothalamus in the base of your brain. The most crucial thing to know about this gland is that it makes several essential hormones that your body needs to function. But we're gonna focus on one specific hormone called ADH, the antidiuretic hormone. ADH is produced in the hypothalamus, stored in the pituitary gland, and released when the body experiences a decrease in blood volume. ADH's function is exactly what it stands for, anti, does not, diuretic, release water. So when ADH is released from the pituitary gland, our body is signaled to not release water, aka we're holding on to fluid in the body. Let's split the screen and show you exactly how ADH plays a role in both SIDH and DI. SIDH, or Syndrome of Inappropriate Antidiuretic Hormone, means that too much ADH is being released from the pituitary gland. ADH runs over to the kidneys to tell them their new job, and the kidneys respond by retaining excess water in the body, more than we need, and that upsets the body's balance of electrolytes. Remember, antidiuretic means we are not diuresing, and the body is behaving inappropriately in SIDH. You can remember this by thinking SI for soaked inside. You're retaining fluids and plumping up like a little water balloon. Now, why does this happen? Why would someone be diagnosed with SIADH? Common situations where the body releases too much ADH or acts inappropriately include disorders of the brain, injuries, tumors, infections, stroke. Think the pituitary gland produces ADH, so damage to that gland will cause irregular function. Another common situation are brain injuries in the hypothalamus region, lung disease, cancer, TB, pneumonia, chronic infections, and sepsis. Symptoms of SIADH all revolve around peeing in the toilet. If the body is holding in water, urine output will be reduced, so we see a stop in urination. If we aren't peeing as much, then we see sticky, thick urine concentration. Think about when you drink a ton of water and you pee that out. Your pee is clear, right? Well, if you're not peeing that out, your pee is yellow. It's sticky and it is thick. A little tip for the NCLEX, this is what we call high urine specific gravity. It is highly concentrated, greater than 1.030. Now, if we are retaining fluids, we are diluting our insides, right? We are soaked inside, which means common labs would show hypoosmolality and hyponatremia. We also would see severely high blood pressure and edema. Speaking of edema, our last major symptoms are swelling in the brain and seizures due to this cerebral edema. SIADH dilutes the body, meaning we are diluting the brain, and that can result in death. NCLEX tip, the first sign of this occurring are complaints of headaches or confusion. So you've been diagnosed with SIADH, now how do you treat it? The goal of treatment is to decrease fluid retention and improve tonicity homeostasis. On the surface, it's easy to think that giving normal saline to a patient with hyponatremia from SIADH will help raise the serum sodium level. But in the case of SIADH, giving normal saline will actually lower the serum sodium even more. So our first line treatment for severe hyponatremia is hypertonic solutions. This will treat SIADH by replenishing sodium in the body without adding too much extra fluid we do not need. And of course, as a nurse, we watch for signs and symptoms of seizures, place the patient on seizure precautions, measure intake and output, and measure the daily weight of our patient. I see you pausing this video, taking notes left and right. You don't need to do that. Everything you heard is available in study sheet form on my Etsy shop. Check it out. I love it, that's great. That's Woo! Yeah, like, subscribe, everything. <laughs>